Hi, welcome to another edition of AC Theory. So today we're going to talk about a Turing machine variant called a multi-tape Turing machine. So in this model, we have multiple tapes. <laughs> so instead of just one tape, let's just say we have three right here. So again, three one-way infinite tapes. We've got a bunch of cells in each. That was awful. I failed art, so I'm going to use my art skills to showcase to thousands of people how to make Turing machines. Okay, so what's going to go into each of these? So let's say we have A, B, C, A, B, C, blanks after that, and then maybe blank, uh, B, dollar sign, A, C, and then stuff, and then maybe, I don't know, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, because I love money. And what we have here we have tape heads that can be in arbitrary positions in these uh, three tapes. It, it could be any number of tapes, but it's three in this case. So in each one, each of the tape heads has an independent movement. So each of the tape heads can move either left or right. Um, I know I've talked about stay put Turing machines. So let's just assume that it's lefts and rights only. And then what we will show is that this is equivalent to the standard model. Um, and then if we wanted to incorporate state puts, we could if we want to. I know SIPSER incorporates uh, state puts right into the this model, but for simplicity, we can just assume that it doesn't happen because we can always make a conversion. So here's so let's actually think about what we can do here. So we got uh, uh, these uh, tapes right here. In general, we can have uh, any number of tapes. Let's just say K tapes. And what we require here in advance is that K be given in advance. Okay, so it's not like I can uh, create a tape or delete a tape at any point because that actually changes the model of computation, uh, believe it or not. But um, we're just gonna assume that the number of tapes is fixed in advance, but you can specify any number that you want, like 100 tapes or something. But you can always uh, say any number you want and you can always get that many tapes, okay? You just can't get any more once you start. Okay, so uh, what we can say about what the formality of the machine is, what does the transition function look like, because it, we got K tapes, well, it's still going to be one state uh, every time we're always in one state, but we are going to be looking at k different cells on the tape. So like the first cell and then the second cell, sorry, the first cell on the first tape and then whatever cell on the second tape, whatever cell on the third tape, and then et cetera, all k tapes. So I'm going to be seeing some tape symbol on all k tapes. So that's going to be gamma to the k because there could be repeats. So there could be a, uh, a B that's being, in fact, in this example, we have a dollar sign being looked at on two different tapes. So um, there's no correlation between the tapes here. Um, and we're going to go to one state. So it's just one state to another state, nothing different there. We're going to be writing K things to the tapes. So write one symbol for each of the tapes, wherever the tape heads happen to be. And each of the tape heads can move left or right independently from each other. So it's going to be left and right to the k power. So that means we're going to be looking at k different uh, either lefts or rights or any combination uh, thereof. Okay, so let's actually be sure we know what this means. So this is the before state of the machine. Uh, this is uh, what is read on on those K tapes. This is the after state, the state once we're uh, completed the, um, the transition. Uh, this one is what is written to the, those K tapes. So this is why it makes sense to have K be fixed in advance so that the transition function is fixed. And these are the tape uh, head movements of those K tapes. Okay, so if we want to show that this is equivalent to the standard model, what we need to answer is, can a standard 
uh, Turing machine simulate a, let's say, K tape Turing machine. So if we know K in advance, then we can figure out what to do. So if K is 100, then we know what to do, and then that's different if K was like 5 or something. So let's say that can, can a standard Turing machine simulate a, a K-tape one? And the other direction, can a K-tape machine simulate a standard one? And that's pretty clear because the K-tape machine can just use one tape and ignore all of the other K-1 tapes and just use the top tape uh, for whatever the original machine would have done. So that's not really that interesting. The more interesting one is, can we have a single tape simulate a lot of tapes? And it turns out I wouldn't be teaching this if the answer wasn't yes. So how do we actually do this? So if we have this one long tape right here, how do we have multiple tapes? And not only that, but how do we have multiple tape heads? Because all of those are independent of each other. So the way that we're going to do this is with uh, delimiters. So with delimiters. And what does a delimiter in this context mean? It means, uh, it means a new tape symbol. Actually, we're going to have a lot of tape symbols as we're going to see here. The way that it's going to work is that we got a tape symbol here, which is the delimiter. So the pound sign is going to be a delimiter. You can use any symbol you want. And I want tape one's contents to be here. And then I will have a separator in between them. And then I'll have, uh, in uh, hopefully, I'll have tape two's contents here. And then a, a delimiter in between. And then at the very end, hopefully, we have K, tape K's um, stuff right there with an, a delimiter. And then the blanks after that. So that's what I, that's what the goal is. This, the, I didn't say how to do this, obviously. So this is the goal, to have something like this. So we want to simulate as if we had K tapes, but we really only have one. Um, and I'm not caring about how fast this machine is. In fact, it's going to be really, really, really slow. <laughs> but um, assuming that we are able to do it in any amount of time, then we're okay. So how do we actually do this here? So the idea is nice that we can just put all the K tapes here, but there are a lot of things that we actually need to worry about here. So how do we actually uh, figure out what to do at the very start? So the multi-tape machine, actually I should uh, say it's K tape. So K tape machine uh, starts with um, the following. So the input is going to be only on the first tape and the uh, blanks on other tapes to start with. Um, and I'll also additionally, uh, tape heads are at first cell on all tapes. Okay, so it, it just starts at the very beginning at, uh, on every single tape. The input's only on the first one, although this really doesn't matter, but it's just good to get a standard going. So the input's only on the first one and nothing else except blanks on the other tapes. Okay, so in effect, what this will look like for the little picture we have up here is that we have something that looks like this. So uh, it's going to have the delimiter at the front. Um, so first off, we got to build this. And I, I assume that we're able to build what the string that I'm going to make right here. So we're going to have W1 through WN, where that's the input. That's the input string. I'm actually going to write that here. So this is the input. And then on the other ones, I'm actually going to have a blank symbol. A single blank symbol and we'll see why in a second why I'm doing this. So a blank symbol, just a single blank on uh, all the other positions. I mean all the other tapes, but a single one where the tape 
contents would be, even though I know that there are more uh, blanks on those other tapes, but I'm writing a single blank, and you'll see why in a second. So uh, what are we going to do with this? So first off, how do we actually figure out where the tape heads are on each? So here's how we're going to solve this problem, and it's really, really weird um, until you understand how this is actually used. Uh, to solve the problem of where the tape heads are, where the wild tape heads are, um, so where the tape heads are, uh, we will, and here's the magic idea, uh, increase the, or, or I guess expand, the tape alphabet. So we'll make the tape alphabet larger. And how are we going to do it? So let's say that the, oops, so let's say that the original tape alphabet was gamma. So then the new uh, tape alphabet, I'm going to call uh, gamma prime. And it's going to be the original one. I'm going to include everything from the original one. And I'm going to also include a different symbol, which I'm going to call Z dot, with a, with a little dot over it, for each Z in the original tape alphabet. So in some sense, this is going to be a, a, a copy of each original symbol. And... Additionally, I'm going to add in the pound sign, which is the, that delimiter character. And what I require is that the pound sign is not in the original uh, tape alphabet. Okay? Um, be, because I want the delimiter to actually mean something here. And it's also important that K be known in advance, the number of tapes, because how do I know with this one tape head that I'm trying to simulate it with, what tape number I'm on. If I had more tape heads, I would know, but I only have one. So I need to know K in advance. Um, and, the, and the pound signs help me figure out when I'm switching from one to the other one because the pound signs only used for this purpose because it's a new symbol. So what is this dotting thing? So this, uh, there's no such thing as like dotting a symbol. This is literally a new symbol. So this is a new symbol entirely. And you may think, okay, well, why couldn't you just call it any symbol? Why do you have to have this dot thing on top of it? It helps us associate uh, what is currently under that. We're thinking of this as a tape head uh, being at that position. So if I had, uh, for example, if I had this being a blank with a dot on top of it, kind of <laughs> looking like this, then that says on this second tape, um, the tape head is right at where this cell is. Even though it's a completely new symbol, it's just a rando symbol, uh, we're thinking of this as the tape head being at that position. Okay, So the whole purpose of dotting, so dotting uh, corresponds to identifying where a uh, tape head is. Okay, So uh, just as an example, so let's say we had a uh, tape like this, and actually I'm just going to copy what I got here because it's already pretty demonstrative. So I'm going to paste it here. So let's say that, um, and maybe I'll expand these a little bit. So let's say I had A, B in this one. Uh, in this one, I have, I guess I destroyed everything I copied. A, B, C in this one, and then blanks on the other ones, let's just say. And then maybe I have the a dot on this B, this A, and a dot on all of the other ones right here. So that's saying that, in effect, tape 1 was positioned right here, tape 2 was positioned here, tape 3 is positioned here, and tape K is positioned there. And I'm assuming there are blanks after that, but it's not important. Okay, so that's a we so we can kind of know where all the tape head contents are. I mean, the tape heads were. It's just we have to simulate the transition 
as if with one tape head. We don't have t t uh, K tape heads. We only have one to deal with. So what could we possibly do with this? So let's say with our one tape head, we were right there. Then how do I figure out what to do? Well, what the original K tape machine did was it looked at those tape contents. It, it looked at the K symbols. So to figure out what to do in this uh, simulation, we got to look across all of these uh, dotted symbols. We got to figure out what the K's dotted symbols are. So uh, to carry out a transition, carry out a transition, we need to do the following. We need to look at the K dotted symbols and uh, by virtue of everything that's going to happen next, we're going to assume that they're exactly K dotted symbols. So we'll never have more or less than that. So that's good. Then what we need to do is to uh, move, uh, actually before that, we need to change the contents of the cells, uh, of those K cells, I should say. Uh, or maybe not change it, depending on what the transition function originally said to do. Uh, the third thing we need to do is to actually move those tape heads. And uh, by this I mean we're going to re-dot some, some symbols. Okay, And uh, I think that's pretty much it. And actually uh, one other thing is we may need to do some reallocation. But we'll uh, get to that. So how do we actually look at the K dotted symbols? Well, what we can do is just uh, scan left to right across the whole across the whole thing. So whenever we see a dot, we're going to actually make a note of that. Okay, we're actually going to have a a huge huge number of states, and the reason is because of this right here to figure out what transition to apply. Because what we need to do is, let's say that we were in state Q before. Well, we got to look at all the possibilities that could occur when we see the first dotted symbol. So this, all these transitions are from first dotted symbol, whatever it might be. Because the transition that um, comes from looking at that first dotted symbol may be totally different depending on which one we are looking at. So we're going to have a bunch of states here, and each one of these is going to have a bunch of transitions coming out of it, and those are going to be for the second dotted symbol. And, each, and so we're going to have a bunch of states here, and each one of those is going to have a bunch of transitions coming out, and it's going to be absolutely massive the number of states we're going to have. In fact, we're going to have uh, roughly, and you can work out exactly how many, uh, gamma prime, which is the new tape alphabet now, uh, to the kth power. Actually, no, it's the original uh, gamma, because we're simulating the original machine. Um, so we're going to have gamma to the k number of these states that we're adding, which is huge, but finite, thankfully. <laughs> it's a huge number. Um, and that's just to figure out what transition to apply. Now we actually have to apply the transition. Um, so we scan from left to right. Well, how do we change the contents of the K cells? Well, what we do is, as you might imagine, we uh, scan. We can either go back to the beginning and scan right, left to right again, or we can just be a little more uh, reasonable and scan right to left. Either way is okay. And what we do is whenever we see a dotted symbol, we change it to whatever it was, okay? Um, and what we can have is for each one of these possible scenarios, we could have a different copy of what we actually do, which means scanning left and then changing the values as needed. And then actually, we can move the tape heads in tandem. So uh, we can do this at the same time as we were moving right to left. So as we're moving from right to left, then all that we need to do is uh, change the contents of the cell and then re-dot whatever symbol is either to the right or to the left of us. And we can have a copy of each one of those possibilities 
among all of these. So it's going to be even way more states, but it's still a finite number. In fact, it's, it's only a constant number, I think, for each one of these. Or, or something that depends on gamma. I, I, the details aren't really that important. Okay, the only real issue is this one, but it's pretty easy to fix. So suppose that we are having a little tape that looks like this, and uh, we have a lot of stuff before, and we're at this scenario right here, and then let's say we have uh, uh, A1, A2, up to AM, and here's the pound sign, and then we have stuff after, but the unfortunate thing is that this cell is dotted. So that cell's dotted, and it's the transition that the original machine did said move right. Then all that we need to do, uh, uh, what the original uh, K-tape machine would have done is it would have put a, a blank symbol right here on that corresponding tape. But the problem is um, there's, we, there's nothing here. We, uh, we don't have a blank symbol that we can add here because this is not the end of the whole input. So whenever this happens, so whenever a realloc is needed, we can uh, borrow a trick from when we did the left reset Turing machine video, which was yesterday. Um, what we can do is we can actually not shift the whole input uh, one position. We can shift from here. So I'll make a little blue line here. So we can the shift from the blue line to the end of all tapes, uh, one position right. So if we move everything one position to the right, and then all that we need to do after that is to put a, a blank with a dot on it um, in the inserted position. And it's pretty easy for a Turing machine to move a lot of stuff left, right, uh, with, sorry, move it right one position. We've already seen how to do that on the left reset Turing machine video. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. The only other issue is, which is actually not really an issue, is what if we had a very similar situation? And I'm actually gonna copy this because it's so good. What if I had a situation like this? Get rid of the blue dots. But instead of a sub m being the a sub m being the dotted symbol, it was a one. But here we were instructed to move left. Um, but then that would mean that we were trying to move off the left hand end of that tape, which is not a problem here because there's more stuff to the left of this cell. But the original machine would have uh, stopped. So what we can do here is uh, we can, there are actually several things we can do. We can just <laughs> zoom left until we ram into the left hand end of the tape and then force ourselves to stop, which is, I guess, kind of destructive. <laughs> but uh, the, I guess the more sane way to do that is, so if this happens, uh, we can go to Q reject immediately. because uh, we wouldn't have accepted the input anyway because we would have stopped here and the Turing machine wouldn't have accepted anyway. So we might as well just outright reject. So that's another thing you can do. Okay, so there are a lot of details, a lot of states that are added here, but the important thing is that it's finite and we're simulating each transition uh, with a lot of transitions, but again, it's only a finite number. So we do all this work to execute one transition out of the K-tape machine, and then what we do? Do it again, and do it again, and do it again until we either accept or reject or just keep going forever. And that, my friends, is how to uh, carry out simulation of a multi-tape Turing machine. <sighs> all right. So thank you all for watching. If you have any questions about multi-tape Turing machines in the comments, please put them there. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. 
and helps us make interesting videos like this one. If there, are, there are many other links in the video description if you want to support this channel further. I'm currently doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring. If you want to contact me for that, my email is in the video description. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.